We are all dominated by electronic media. For the most part, it's a one-way process. But it shouldn't be a one-way process any more than any means of communication should be one way. So what we're trying to do in Access is to give millions of ordinary people the right to use this vehicle to speak with each other and to speak with the uh, public officials. Most people think of sort of television and the media as a kind of given, but I think that we have to think of it as something that we can influence and we can take part in. We all know how terrible a lot of the media is and how there's a lot of um, distortions and disinformation. I think that making your own media and investigating issues yourself is a way of, of countering that. Okay, deep dish. <laughs> Here's the unabridged explanation of how Deep Dish TV gets to you. It starts with thousands of producers making programs within their communities nationwide. They send their shows to coordinating producers, each in a different region working on a different show. All the edited shows are sent to Deep Dish Central in New York, where we coordinate the network. We take it to an uplink, which sends it to a satellite, which sends its beam back down to this hemisphere in a pattern called a footprint. Cable systems receive the signal in a dish and send it out to their subscribers on a public access channel, through the cable system to your house, to your TV, to your eyes. This is Alvin on the mic. When I talk, I talk it right. And I'm talking about AIDS, the killer of the night. I know you've heard it all before. This AIDS epidemic killing more and more. As long as there's one ounce of strength in our body, that ounce of strength will be used to fight for this good cause. And in the end, we will win. These, these, these radicals, these anarchists, these socialists, these communists, without them, uh, we would not have had the kind of changes that took place in this country, which were good changes. Because very often these people, these, these agitators, these radicals, they were the ones who were needed to start things off. I think it's important to explore the potential sources of power we hold within our hands, especially now during this period when it is so important to create um, united fronts against the official um, oppressions that are represented by those in power. The lesson to come out of the AIDS epidemic is be compassionate, but also outlaw homosexuality and perversion in America. Well, I understand you hate um, gays, but what about... Um... I don't hate anybody. Yeah. I just love America. This series is made out of material sent to us by people all over the country who are currently speaking out against the U.S. involvement in the Persian Gulf. The war is, is very gray. And, and the outcome of the war is going to be very grave. Uh, I will use anything at this point to, to slow down the war machine of the United States. With this show, we will introduce you to some ways that people all over the country are making a different kind of news. I'm Tom Poole from Not Channel Zero. They call me Not Uncle Tom. And this is my partner. What's up, B? Home Slice. My name is George Sosa, also known as the Media Wilder. Also work with Not Channel Zero, the Revolution Televised. We'll tell you more about that later. First, Sister Mei Ying gonna kick it. I'm Mei Ying and I'm from Paper Tiger. Hey, I'm, I'm Jocelyn Taylor from House of Color Video and Diva TV. I'm here, I'm queer, and I'm on television. Oh, and I'm Mary Feaster, and I'm also from the Paper Tiger TV Collective. And we all work with groups that, pr that produce independent video, dealing with a variety of issues that usually the mainstream media won't get anywhere near, not even with a 10-foot transponder. TV is being held captive. It is our mission to liberate it. We're taking control of our TV sets and taking control of our lives. We're not corporate owned and we're not under governmental control. And we are not an information conduit for the Pentagon. They don't want people, regular people, to make media. Because maybe it will sound different than what the mainstream media is putting out. Jamal. I'm uh, on death row in Pennsylvania. Um, 
ex-president of the Association of Black Journalists of Philadelphia. I'm still a continuing revolutionary journalist. I write for anybody who wants me to write for them. Um, and I'm fighting my conviction. If knowledge wasn't a weapon, they would not have denied it. You would not have hung slaves for trying to read a book. Police and National Guardsmen have been working overtime this week to protect the city, and they're getting a lot of thanks for their efforts. In fact, some people are bringing hot coffee and treats to the troops as they stand in the streets. One of the critical aspects to uh, this center is that it's been a clearinghouse of information for lots of individuals, not only who live in Seattle, but have been coming in from around the country and around the globe. We are providing a base of operation for journalists and others who are going out into the streets and capturing the content, editing the content, and then distributing it over the internet or satellite. We're reporting live from the Republican National Convention in Philadelphia. First, a Democracy Now! encounter with former President Bush. Then, analysis on General Colin Powell as he takes center stage. We'll have commentary from the Socialist Party candidate for president, Dave McReynolds, and some of the activists behind the ruckus this week. All that and more coming up on Pacifica Radio's Democracy Now! Palestine, the home of two of the world's great religions, the ancient crossroads of civilization, there are few places on Earth where geography is so central to understanding the current conflict. The United States has already had a busy day attacking. And it was shocking, and it was awesome. And it was shocking, and it was shocking, and it was shocking, and it was shocking, and it was If you have to ask, is this shock and awe, you're not seeing it. Tens of thousands of Iraqis had to give away their lives for reasons still unclear to them. Many reasons were given. Some of them were, it was the house for terrorists. Some of them were weapons of mass destruction, which proved to be a false story. Uh, to ask us why we're doing this, you know, why is there a world tribunal on Iraq? It's like asking, you know, someone who stops at the site of a, an accident where people are dying on the road, why did you stop? Why didn't you keep walking like everybody else? They call it Winter Soldier, Iraq and Afghanistan. Organized by Iraq Veterans Against the War, nearly 300 veterans assembled outside Washington, D.C. to share searing accounts of the occupations. How much were you going to take before you were going to get your, your act together? So um, everybody is watching because this is the belly of the beast and what happens on Wall Street affects everybody on this globe. And we're talking about deeply affecting. We're talking millions of people suffering because of the food crisis, the climate crisis, um, rampant speculations with their currencies. This is not an American issue. This is a global issue and the world's been waiting. It doesn't matter if they are the relatively simple and ineffective rockets from Gaza into southern Israel, or Israel's sophisticated U.S.-made missiles launched from F-16s and Apache helicopters. The real question is the imprisonment of the people of Gaza. Why the continued occupation of Palestinian land and the massive collective punishment of its people. Mm -hmm. 
وهي هي أبويا برضو استشهد هي فلسطين رسمتها وهي ميتة قاعدة بتسيل الدم فلسطين كلها Our entire aim is just to be a, a studio, an open workspace for people working on um, social, economic, political, environmental justice. Organizing without art is handing pieces of paper out and yelling at people, and that, that doesn't work. As soon as you get some kind of a big visual, it gets people interested, it gets their guard down, they're ready to, to talk to you about it. But today we're doing a pageant version of this is a pageant that we created in the spring, uh, and we did for the first half of the summer called the Anti-Tar Sands Manifesto inspired by what's happening in Canada with tar sands struggle with the indigenous people and also specifically caribou herds that are being brought to the brink of extinction because of the tar sands. We need a media like WBAI in New York, like Democracy Now!, like community television in New York and independent media all over this country and around the world to link together, to break through the static that veil of distortion and lies and misrepresentations and half-truths that obscure reality, when what we need is the media to give us the dictionary definition of static, criticism, opposition, unwanted interference. We need a media that covers power, not covers for power. We need a media that is the fourth estate, not for the state. And we need a media that covers the movements that create static and make history. We want it to believe that he was really like Malcolm X in Barack Obama's clothing. <laughs> what happened with Ferguson is a recognition that it doesn't matter if he was. It is a fundamental structural problem that black lives just matter less than everybody else's. We have to vision something bigger and something better.